Hey, so today I want to make a quick video about using ArcGIS Pro. I'm usually an ArcGIS desktop user, but Pro is the future and we're all going to end up using it. So anyways, I wanted to try it out and do something simple, make a simple map, maybe use some editing. And I have these nice aerial photos that I want to work with. So I'm going to work with vectors, rasters, and, uh, and try to make some GIS data. And so whenever you start up ArcGIS Pro, there's a few things that are different. The first thing that's going to be the major difference is that you have a sign-in now. Um, that's a little bit weird for licensing for some people, and it's going to cause you some headaches um, getting your account authorized. But once you're authorized, you can launch up ArcGIS Pro on any machine and be able to sign in and use it, which is kind of cool. Uh, whenever it comes to create a new project, um, you're going to be thinking blank, because blank map, like with desktop. But actually, if you want to have something that's very similar to what you've used in the past, you're actually going to go to um, map. Um, and so that's one thing that's a little bit um, different. Um, whenever uh, you go into a blank map, um, I'm going to go ahead and make a new map uh, here. And so let me just get this going. Uh, new. And I'm going to just call this um, UF Arc Pro Test. Oh, of course, I don't have a folder, um, so that's one, I guess, one of the little clunky things that are going on. I'm just going to put it here in data and say OK, and then here afterwards, I'm going to uh, make my project, which I'm going to call UF Arc um, Pro Test. And so this is a little weird thing about it since you have to make these new projects. And again, in total ESRI fashion, you have to choose the location and then name it, which is kind of a hassle I wish it would just be one line but that's you know another story so anyways I hit OK and I'm gonna get the uh, blank um, map and what's interesting about this that's different than um, past RGS desktop is that we don't show up with a blank map um, with a blank canvas like just a white page we actually show up with um, a base map already added onto the background which is a little bit different, um, a little bit more interesting, uh, at least to look at. And so um, once you have that started up, um, now I want to start thinking about um, how, where am I going to, how I'm going to add data. And so add data is actually very similar to what we used to have with this big add data button. And so if I click on add data, it's going to prompt me. And what is very interesting, it's a big change is that we still have, of course, folder connections here, but we can just directly access files from the computer, which is already a huge difference than the past. Uh, we all remember hitting add data and having to actually map our connection. Now we can just actually navigate directly to the data set, which is kind of cool. Um, I have these aerial photos that I'm planning on adding, so I'm going to add these in here. And so you can see these are the different uh, seamless image databases, SIDs that I have from 2017 um, they are um, half meter um, or sorry half a foot pixel uh, which is uh, extremely high resolution for aerial photo which is pretty cool um, whenever I add the photo oh, when I add the, the data to the project another cool thing that happens is that Arc Pro just automatically zooms into the area saving me a problem of having to go to zoom full extent I wonder if I click full zoom extent it still zooms to the whole base map which is kind of a kind of a drag um, another thing that you can see here by just looking at full uh, zoom extent is that I have my conical projection so it's pulling the projection the display projection from the seamless image uh, databases that we have here the SID images uh, which we can see here under the um, under the general information oh, under source information um, if we look here under the projection type that we have here under spatial references we can see that we are working with a Lambert conformal conic and state plane uh, Florida North um, system here in the US foot is the linear unit and so all those things were brought in directly into the display projection which is uh, pretty cool um, and so here you can see this is the imagery that um, that I have here of the University of Florida campus and if I click around I can see that I can zoom in um, quite close onto it and um, get a pretty good uh, uh, view of what's going on I'd let it draw but uh, here for example the, let's go to the to the swamp why not uh, if we zoom in here onto the uh, football field we can see we get here pretty close we can see the marching band practicing here uh, making uh, 
making some signs, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, so anyways, uh, you can see this is pretty good resolution imagery. So now I want to try making a um, shape file, or I guess now it's not really a shape file, a feature class. And I'm going to go ahead and digitize this uh, football field here. And so to do this, um, some changes have happened. We have, of course, our catalog hanging out up here. But now we have this new interesting tab that we're going to click on catalog. And when we click on catalog over here, um, we can see in our folder, in that test folder I have, I can go into it and I'm going to have a, a geodatabase hanging out here uh, that I've been working in. And in that geodatabase, I can go ahead and make a new uh, feature class. And I'm going to go ahead and make this new feature class. I'm going to call it um, the swamp uh, for the football field. And so here um, you can see that um, some things are interesting about this. First, it's directing you to the sidebars instead of the normal pop-up uh, windows that we were seeing before with the wizards. The wizards seem like they're being embedded on the side, which is kind of cool. Um, also, what it's really doing is that it's queuing up um, a geoprocessing statement that's going to be put into the engine tour to be to run. So now we're actually kind of putting in the uh, different parameters that would show up into uh, what would look like a Python uh, script, actually. So if we go here and we finish and execute the tool, we can see this runs in the background in some kind of uh, geoprocessing uh, wizard, which is a uh, so geoprocessing engine, which is, uh, I think, pretty cool. Um, so this is, uh, some things are, are changing. This might be due to the 64-bit um, native environment that RGS Pro is in. Um, and so if we go back um, to the next tab, you can see here it was completed successfully. Uh, so we actually see here the information, the parameters we use, the environments, here's the messages. Um, so forth. Let's see what we do if we click on there. Yeah, so it just ex exports. It just outputs the window so we can check it out. Um, if I go back over to now the uh, map, I can see that it added the swamp um, layer onto my table of contents. And you can see here at the table of contents, this should look, this should be kind of familiar. We're doing by drawing order. And you can see here the different layers within our map. And if we right click it and we hit uh, for example, the layer properties, we can do things in here like, um, uh, oh, this is just seeing the difference. Sorry, that's not where I wanted to go. Oh, maybe that was where I wanted to go. Um, oh, here, symbology. So if I click on the symbology tab, um, you can see here I have all these um, options for the symbology. And it has here some different, you know, built-in symbols, of course, out of the, out of the gallery. Um, I don't think they're going to have... Um, uh, athletic field oh sports turf interesting okay so let's go use that and so if I use that as my symbol um, that will let me you know change this swatch here and so I can go ahead and digitize I think digitizing is something that has been a kind of interesting uh, change in ArcGIS Pro um, the editing session is a lot more seamless um, so as opposed to going in and um, having to make the editing toolbar and start editing. Now we have an editing tab on the wizard. And whenever we start editing, we just simply hit create, uh, which is a little bit more, I think, straightforward. Um, and whenever I click create, I still have the options here for saving and discarding. Um, but you see here on the create features, it, this um, tab shows up where I can click on the swamp. And then I'm gonna have here the different options for editing. And so if I go through here, I can start tracing out the, um, the field. Okay, so let's do that. And done. Okay, and so now I've made a uh, an edit. I edited in. Uh, sorry, I added. I created a shape file. Uh, sorry, I have to get the new terminology. A feature class. And so here is now our new instance of a feature class. Um, let's go ahead and do the uh, the baseball field. Why not? They're the national champions. So. Um, sorry, I messed that up, so let me cancel that one. Um, so anyways, I want to um, go over here, zoom into the baseball field, and I'm going to go ahead and um, also uh, digitize the baseball version of the Swamp. Why not? And so here I'm making my second instance of a feature class. If 
That's, and so now if I go, of course, into my attribute table, I'll see here I have um, two different um, polygons. One is the baseball field. The other one is the football field. Um, I'm wondering, okay, so I still can't add a field without stopping the editing session. So here, let's go ahead and save the edits. And then I'm going to hit yes, save. And once that edits are saved, um, I should be able to add a field. Yep, that's true. So I add a field. And here I'm going to call the field, um, let's see here, current layer. Oh, so it's still loading the fields. Um, okay, so I have here field name, alias. And um, so I'm making a new field here, and I want to call it um, type of sports. Why not type? And then I'm going to have that, of course, not be a um, a long. Uh, I don't know why this is freezing up on me. Um, this needs to change, and I need this to be a string or a text. So here, text and string are the same. So if I hit text, I go ahead and say create uh, new field. It's all done. Okay. So I accidentally created actually a second field that I didn't want to create. Hold on. Let's do area. Okay. And then this one, I'll leave this as a double. Why not? Okay, and so all this should be done now. Um, let me see if I close this. Is that enough to make it? Are you sure you want to close this all? No, I don't want to do that. Oh, I have to click save. Okay, of course. So I hit save, and then those two uh, fields are added. Now into the um, into the swamp attribute table. If I go here, I can see them. Um, I don't think I can start typing, can I? So that's actually pretty cool that I don't have to be in an edit session to edit these. Um, that is a big change. Um, before you would have to uh, turn on editing, um, or at least I would. I never knew that they could do that with normal. And then this see here for calculating the area. And let's try here. Um, calculate field um, area the Python expression. Okay, and I want to say that area is equal to the area. Let's see if that if that does it. Uh, let's try it. No, expression is valid. Let's run it and see what happens. So did it do anything? It didn't do anything, so I must have done something wrong. Um, well, let's see here. So calculate geometry is gone, and now they have calculate field. And so obviously I'm doing something wrong here. Um, area is equal to um shape area let's try that one run and yes so that worked and of course only calculate the one that i had highlighted so i have to clear my um my selections if i want to be able to um uh calculate both of them and so if i go here now and run that calculation again and again we're going with shape area and area equals the shape area and run that let's see let's get those nice so we have both of them so we can see here the um, baseball field is actually a little bit uh, bigger than the uh, football field uh, let's see that uh, visually I guess yeah hmm, interesting um, so anyways that's uh, how we work with this so um, now I have this um, of course is located in my geo database and um, I'm going to hit save and save all my edits um, good it's all good and then of course oh how do we uh, share this that's the next the last thing that we need to worry about and so if I click on um, the uh, share option this is something that's a little bit different than before um, before you know you would print a map uh, but now printing is just another type of sharing so you can see here we have here an exporting a map uh, printing a map we can make um, uh, map uh, packages layer packages uh, even uh, publish up to the web all these really cool things but is this the type of map that we really want to make does it really you know just this kind of a image uh, a raster image without scale bars and north arrows and so forth and so what we actually want to do to make a map is do an insert and insert a new um, a new layout and so a new layout will let you choose uh, different size papers let's just go with a uh, letter paper and then uh, whenever we get that new layout uh, here 
we can see that we don't have um, any contents so we actually have to add in a map frame and that's where we can add in that map that we were just working on and so now that's coming in here and then we have all of course all of our goodies like the uh, north arrows and um, all that other kinds of stuff um, and so anyways once we have all that we can do uh, you know th the file export um, the map and go ahead and print that but anyways you know you can see north arrows and uh, different types of scale bars interesting okay um, and so anyways um, I'm not gonna go through on how to make a nice looking map but uh, if you go through and you finish making your map um, go ahead and uh, click on the uh, share button and then that's where you have the ability to print that layout and that layout is going to be what's going to look more like you know what you would expect you also have here now the export option where you're exporting directly into a PDF and so um, <clears throat> that's also another another thing that you can uh, uh, check out um, so um, pretty cool that uh, so far I'm uh, you know, surprised, uh, you know, pleasantly surprised about the, um, about ArcGIS Pro. Um, some things are different, of course, but it seems like there's some uh, functionality that's added into it. Um, I like the way that the geoprocessing uh, works uh, with the, um, where things seem more integrated. So it seems like there might be more potential uh, to do different kinds of things. And so, anyways, that was my quick tour of ArcGIS Pro. Hope you enjoyed the video.